Imagine your job is to reduce traffic at urban intersections. How would you do it? You have to factor in cars, pedestrians, and transit, all while remaining within a limited city budget. And then, what if a new AI-powered technology came along that could help you solve this problem without spending a bunch of money? Well, that's exactly what's starting to happen as Google just released a new AI-powered traffic management system that could ease traffic problems in a lot of US cities. This technology could have massive impacts on how cities go about reducing traffic. It can analyze large amounts of data from Google Maps and then identify traffic lights and streets that are operating inefficiently. As cars continue to flood US cities, congestion is on the rise. However, Google's new system has the potential to eliminate stop and go traffic and improve efficiency by eliminating stops by as much as 30% and it's super cheap for cities to implement. So how does it work and how can this tech make traffic more efficient? Okay, imagine you're driving on a street with a bunch of traffic lights and there's a huge traffic jam on one street. You come to a four-way stop with a traffic light, but the other streets have no traffic but the street you're on has a lot of traffic, but you still have the red light. The light you're at finally turns green and you speed up. However, the very next light you're approaching then turns red, so you have to slow down again. This is a stop and go cycle, and it creates a ton of excess traffic and emissions at intersections and cities. Stop and go cycles are a very obvious sign that traffic lights are not operating at peak efficiency. Google's new AI-powered traffic management solution, which they call Project Greenlight, will be able to pick up on these cycles and recommend solutions to cities' transportation departments to retime these traffic lights. So let's go a little more depth into how this technology will work to solve cities' traffic problems. To put it simply, it uses data collected from Google Maps to determine which streets have backups and which streets don't. First, it will use Google's already extensive city mapping knowledge, which will allow the software to identify current traffic light settings such as cycle duration, transition intervals, and green light distribution. Then, it will analyze traffic patterns by using a model that Google developed to comprehend traffic flow at intersections. This will enable them to analyze typical traffic behaviors, including stop-start cycles, which is how often cars accelerate just to slow down again. It will then calculate the average waiting times at traffic lights and the coordination among nearby intersections, which is when your traffic light is green, but the one ahead of you is red. It will then use that information to create recommendations for cities using AI. It will recommend timing adjustments for city traffic engineers. It might say recommend that the westbound light of an intersection have 10 additional seconds, while the north and south traffic require less green light time. What's pretty cool about all this is that it can take as little as five minutes for the city to implement these changes. So why is this all important? I see a lot of potential benefits and some drawbacks to the system, which I'll look at next. But first, let's look at the benefits to this new technology. So what makes Project Greenlight good? Well, Project Greenlight serves as a very inexpensive way for cities to improve their traffic problems. Inexpensive is the key word here. Instead of cities spending millions of dollars rebuilding intersections or purchasing new traffic monitoring software, they can now use this Project Greenlight AI to cut out a large amount of costs. Before this technology was used, cities would often just spend tons of money on expensive hardware to estimate traffic flow or install costly sensors to try and time the lights. This project can cut out a lot of those costs and allow cities' transportation departments to save that money for better projects elsewhere. It also means that there'll be less emissions at intersections. Google estimates that this will decrease emissions by up to 10% by eliminating this stop-and-go traffic that is seen at cities' intersections. And it can do all this without needing a bunch of extra hardware. So cities can get the benefits of reduced traffic without having to spend a ton of money. 
and it's already been implemented in Seattle, which is the first test city in the US for this technology. And Seattle has already made some changes to their traffic lights to improve efficiency and reduce traffic. I know I've said improve efficiency and reduce traffic a lot, but bear with me. Another benefit that I see to this technology is the fact that it can be implemented on a pretty wide scale, in the sense that cities of all size can embrace this sort of technology because it doesn't require a bunch of upfront costs. It's pretty inexpensive. Let me preface that it's no secret that this channel advocates for less car use and better urban planning, as it's the ultimate way to reduce traffic. However, it's important to keep in mind that a lot of the US is already designed around driving. This technology is a way to decrease travel times and reduce pollution in a lot of US cities. This technology could make roads across the US a lot more efficient where instead of waiting at five red lights in a row, where you have to accelerate, brake, accelerate, and brake, it could be streamlined to reduce the stopping and starting that creates a lot of additional pollution. It also means that cities' transportation departments will have extra money that they will no longer have to spend on expensive traffic monitoring and sensors. Hopefully, they can take this money and invest it into better infrastructure that promotes more walkable and transit-oriented designs. Will they spend the money on something productive like this? Knowing American cities, who knows? But they could, and I'll give them the benefit of the doubt and count this as a plus. But seriously, I truly hope that US cities can use this money to improve urban spaces and allow people to take transit to more places. Now, I try to stay positive, but there are of course some possible unintended negative effects of this technology. It could potentially lead to induced demand, where because it's now more efficient to drive, more people are incentivized to drive versus use other means of transportation. It could end up taking the exact amount of time as it did before Project Greenlight for people to reach their destinations. Once this technology is implemented, it will improve the driving experience, which in turn could lead to more people wanting to drive. As more people driving means more traffic and more congestion, and then boom, we're right back to where we started, but with even more cars on the road. This is essentially a similar thing that happens when more lanes are added to a highway. Traffic is temporarily reduced, making the driving experience better in the short term. But once more people see that there's less traffic, they think, oh, I might as well start driving now that there's less traffic. Of course, this scenario certainly might not happen. And I could just be imagining things, but I think it's important to address as it certainly could happen. So now that I've just spent the last few minutes talking about conflicting points of positive and negative impacts of this technology, I want to share some final thoughts on this. Overall, I really would like to see cities across the US implement this at their busy city intersections. I think this tech presents a serious opportunity to reduce traffic and the amount of cars that are idling in our urban centers while just waiting for lights to turn green. I think it's an inexpensive short-term solution to cities' traffic problems. However, I don't want to see cities using this as an excuse to not invest in public transit and better pedestrian infrastructure. The single best way to reduce traffic is to reduce the number of cars on the road. Creating more dense walkable areas is the long-term solution, but in the short term, Project Greenlight definitely might lead to some more efficient cities.